Kamen Rider Kiva is, at time of writing, the last full series that Kamen Rider veteran Toshiki Inoue got to be a head writer for. He still worked for Toei on movies and specials for Kamen Rider after this, but in terms of the yearly show, this is it. Marking the end of a semi-trilogy you can make between Agito, Fais, and Kiva, which are all series head written by Inoue during the Heisei period. Though with Kiva, Inoue didn't want to replicate Agito or Fais, he wanted to do something structurally different from any Kamen Rider series before or since. There is technically two different ongoing stories in Kamen Rider Kiva, taking place in two different time periods before they slowly collide throughout the series. We have 2008, where Wataru, the titular Kamen Rider Kiva, fights off the Fangires, and 1986, where his dad-to-be, Otoya, gets roped into the mysterious organization fighting Fangires as we see the origins of many elements the 2008 period has. Each time period has their own distinct characters and actors, so even if they don't communicate what time period we are at the given moment, you should still know where we are in the show. Admittedly, the show doesn't use the two time periods to their full creative advantage as a lot of the plots end up being here's the organization trying and failing to fight a fan guy in 1986 that Kiva will kill in 2008, but still solid thanks to Kiva's entertaining cast of characters. Wataru is what I'd call the Shinji Akari of Kamen Rider, and that he's a very well-written meek character, but because he has relatable breakdowns and struggles, people unfairly call him wimpy even though he does eventually stand up to the fight. Wataru starts the series as a shut-in. He's very socially awkward when he does go out and just wants to play his violin, but over time, he starts to break out of his shell and make some friends, even fall in love. However, tragedy does strike every now and again, as Wataru gets emotionally hurt and breaks down multiple times throughout the series, to the point where he even attempts to convince his parents to not give birth to him at one point, but he learns the beauty in living eventually. Yeah, life has a lot of hardship, but we gotta keep living strong for those who loved us and those who love us now. I know I'm being vague to avoid some major twists, but I feel like Wataru's character arc is in no way responding to the critiques about his overuse of depressing situations and plots. These stories can be relatable and comforting to those also suffering under a similar circumstance, and to show that a character like that can keep on living and fighting despite it all? It's amazing, and if that ain't Kamen Rider, I don't know what is. Wataru is legit the most underrated Kamen Rider protagonist to me, and I love him with all my heart. For this season's secondary writer, we have Nago, aka Kamen Rider Iksa. He starts off as an uptight douche with his whole give your life back to the god and I'll be the only Kamen Rider the world needs shtick, but he eventually learns not to be such a stick in the mud. Honestly, I like to think of Nago's arc as a parallel to overly moralist Christians being okay and helpful to people with different beliefs, given Ix's whole holy theming. Besides that, he's a very entertaining dork, and I highly encourage you to check out the Ix's size bonus video for Kiva, it's amazing. Then there's Taiga, aka Kamen Rider Saga, who has a really cool suit, and that's about all the in-depth stuff I got to say on him. He's Wataru's brother and childhood best friend, but he doesn't endear me with his screen time. He just does the bare minimum for the plot he's given, which I guess is fine, since the story of Saga is pretty interesting, but I think either having Taiga introduced earlier in the show to have more scenes with adult Wataru or giving him extra character traits would have made me care about him more. As is, he's not bad, just serviceable. Otoya is the main protagonist of the 1986 segments of Kiva. He's a suave womanizer who might be very goofy with his mannerisms, but genuinely believes in the best of humanity and the Fangires. This is shown in his relationship with Wataru's mother-to-be and him befriending Fangires that become Kiva's power-ups in 2008. This kind of character could easily be seen as slimy, but the actor charisma and the character's growth manages to prevent the womanizing from being anything too gross. Overall, I really like Kamen Rider Kiva. The melodramatic elements of the show are very entertaining to watch in a way distinct yet familiar to Inoue's other works, probably thanks to the gothic theming Kiva is drenched in from the music to the aesthetics. Which oddly makes Kiva feel like a love letter and goodbye to the 2000s as a decade, even more so than the actual show that says goodbye to the decade. It's not a perfect show, I feel like the villains and a few of the origins to Kiva's powers are just kind of on autopilot with no extra spice to make them interesting, but it gets the drama and core characters right to make for it an enjoyable soap opera-esque season of Kamen Rider.